Uh, I met Ken back in 1978. Yeah. <laughs> uh, him and Rich were down at the cabin. Yeah. We were having a good old time. Uh, I think it's the most important thing about Ken is family. He's taught me and all his kids how to treat our wives, how to raise mm -hmm. our children, and how to keep them safe. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I knew a lot of I knew a lot of grown ups, but I didn't know very many adults. Yeah. And so in that way he was like one of the few grown ups that I really respected and really liked. You know, even though I only met him a few times. Yeah. And I just you know, when I saw his obituary I just I had to come. So um I guess long history with the family, family, uh, being included in family and becoming kind of extended, non-related family. Uh, with uh, Ken and Rachel's youngest son, Mark, we made early contacts out in South Dakota and uh, been a lifelong friendship. Uh, lots of political gatherings, lots of slaters together, uh, lots of fond uh, memories, memories on the sailboats, on the bikes. Ken and Rachel's homes and later Ken and Connie's homes. Um, just a lot of real strong brotherly ties. Yeah. Yeah. Good okay. good good stuff. Good stuff. Any favorite memory you can think of? Well, it's hard gosh, it's hard to pinpoint any one. I mean I a sailing trip down to the Windward Islands in the Caribbean has come to mind. Oh, wow. But also sailing on the St. Croix, you know, all over the you know, just really you know, times at the Capitol, looking on political stuff. Um, the whole interconnection of working with Senator Wellstone, well, Paul Wellstone, soon mm -hmm. becomes Senator Wellstone. You know, there are so many individual fond memories, it would be really tough to pick one out. It's okay, a that's all right. Yeah, just lots. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some of the things, and to be honest, about some of the things that used to happen on the boat trips. Um, well, uh, we had a lot of fun on the sailboats, and sometimes things would get a little stressful. And it would kind of be like grumpy, grumpy old men for a little while. Who was, grum who was grumpy, Ken? Both of them. They both had their moments. They both had their moments. Yeah, they both had their moments. That's all I'll say. But, but Ken would tell people more to do things, right? Yeah. You would go with Dan, and Dan was Dan, always Mark, there. Dan was always kind of laughing at his father's roughness. Yeah. Well, yeah. they would get into it. Yeah. And the difference in their personality is fun. You know, my, my husband, Herman, and, um, and Ken, the personalities are so funny, but they, Ken, Ken was she said she was gonna captain of the boat, and he was doing everything, and Herman was just in the and I'm yeah. not saying anything. I'm sorry you don't have the, the girls. That trip was hysterical. Any one of his daughters, Ken's daughters, and one of mine was here. They all, the men went on with, with all their daughters when went for one weekend. And they tell stories that are very funny. Then I was I was waiting to have a baby and then and they just had Jossie. And then I had I had my David. He's the one of the sons of my David, so it's been a long, long, long time. time. And then after uh, we lived in, in um, we moved away and moved, in, moved to a few places, including Chicago, and we finally settled in, in Minnesota, down in Roseland. Yeah. My name is Shuckman. Yeah. How long ago was that? Well, Jazzy was born in. Uh, oh, how long have you known him? Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. uh, see. Birth of um, David was born. Forty-eight. And let's see. David was born in fifty in Minnesota. My dad was forty-nine. David. 50. Was, 
Yeah, he was born. Right. You were there. <laughs> and we knew them, you know, just before 50, when we moved away soon after 1950. Yeah. So that's a long time. Yeah. And we moved here. We moved here. Do you have a favorite memory that you can think of off the top of your head? No, it was just, it was just with all friends and all that. I do remember Rachel more than that. She was a dear friend of mine. Yes. As Ken was. It's strange just not having them around. Yeah. I've known the Chelsea's. Since the uh, late 40s, I think, what is that, 60 years? <laughs> Long time. And I first met Rachel at a peace rally, and the minute I saw her, I decided, then she decided we were going to be friends forever, we were almost friends forever. And uh, it's been a long journey and a, and a joyous one. And, Do you remember the very first time you met Ken? Yeah, I met Ken shortly after I met Rachel. And uh, we, that day we brought our husbands together at a meeting and actually at dinner. And Ken spent until 2-3 o'clock in the morning uh, educating me in some piece of history I wanted to know about. So he was, he was an educator and so was Rachel. Very dynamic, incredible people. Yeah. Absolutely. Tireless in the work for justice and civil rights. Um, I mean, Grandpa had a lot of dimension to me for a lot of different reasons. But when I was growing up, um, he was my main caregiver when I was sick. And uh, it's okay. It gave us a lot of time to be just him and I. And I got to see him in a different light than I think most people because most of him, most people see him as a warrior and someone who was fearless. And I saw him as my grandpa who was afraid for his granddaughter, um, but always steadfast and always made me feel like I'm here and no matter um, what when I'm with you that you'll be safe and you're going to be okay and so and he always made me feel that way even as an adult and so that's what I miss the most I literally just tried to call like a week ago without even thinking just wanting to hear his voice and tell me that everything's going to be all right so I miss my grandpa <laughs> uh, one of my favorite memories was actually very recently was the anniversary of one knee I had to pick him up from the airport and I was driving, driving him to the res, and the sun was setting, and he was holding my hand, and he was singing, and Grandpa was notoriously terrible singer, <laughs> um, but it was just peaceful and beautiful, and he was in such high spirits and so excited about seeing his friends and about being back on that land and talking about what it was like during Wounded Knee and how his history connects to my history. And, you know, being, I'm being Lakota and Jewish and how much pride he had in his grandchildren that we were still so devoted to the land and the people of that community. And it really meant a lot to me. And it was like just special moments with him that I hold very sacred and that I miss. I knew Ken through the peace movement primarily, although my former husband worked uh, as a law clerk with, at Robin Stevens in Orleans. But um, in 1967 and 68, I was in charge of the uh, McCarthy headquarters. And um, we, did, we had a lot of interactions around the first district with Ken. And Rachel came in and worked very much. So, um, and later, my former husband. Um, Sharon Law Offices with Ken. Oh, nice. I've known him 
um, since 1967 and admired him really, you know, really well. I mean, since 1967. And he admired him since 1967. A man of great integrity, courage, and lots of fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you. Well, thank you for being here today. Yeah. Well, wouldn't miss it. He is a great man. Uh, my relationship was they basically uh, adopted me as their daughter. And, uh, they sent me to college, University of Minnesota. Uh, I, I was embraced by, by the family. They embraced me and I embraced her. And uh, I was doing the civil rights era. I met them. And over the period of time, you know, a party. Uh, so, uh, I, I think in talking about Ken or Rachel, actually, they were just two little people. You know, they practiced what they preached and what they believed. And uh, they were very active and engaged in the okay, politics, well, local it. and national politics, you know, trying to make a difference in the world. And I would say, uh, you know, adopting me and sending me to college, that's making a difference. Yeah. Do you remember the very first time that you met him? Mm -hmm. uh, I came here with two other young people as a part of the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. raising funds for the Greenwood SNCC project. And so when we came here, uh, some of the people that was already here introduced us to Ken and Rachel. Uh, Rachel said to us that if we ever wanted to go to college, okay, come, take me. come back to Minnesota and she would make sure that we got an education. And so at some point, I decided to take them up on that. I mean, it was, it was frightening. It was, you know, it was on the edge. It was terrifying. And you know, how do you leave, leave all that you know and all that you knew? to go stay with some white folks to go to school. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I had the guts to do it, and I did it. And, uh, so it was probably one of the best decisions that I made in my life. And it was cold when I got here. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was so cold here. And, and every day I was going to go home and go back to the city. Yeah. But that's kind of... They might be uh, my siblings, you. you know. I, thought, well, of course I mean, they embraced me too. You know, it wasn't just Ken and Rachel, but it was Mark and Danny and Judy and Jackie yeah. and David, you know, yeah. who also you know, embraced me. And so, you know, that I think is one of the most fascinating things, you know, about Ken and Rachel. You know. I mean, they, they, how they live, they live what they believe and demonstrated it every day. Ken meant a great deal to me. Uh, he's my father-in-law, and uh, Joshie and I uh, were married like 26 or 27 years ago, but we were dated for about five years. And during my time dating with Joshie, I spent a lot of time with Ken uh, and, and Rachel. And, and, and Jossie's family, and, and it was uh, interesting to me to understand, um, I don't know, goodness at such a fundamental level uh, throughout their entire family, and what people did for each other, and uh, and in their community, just in an effort to make things better. So I, I learned an awful lot about how how to see that and how to, to participate in that. Um, and, and Ken is you know, he's like the leader, and Rachel's leader, and there was no sitting down and or sitting back and letting the parade go by. And you jumped up and you got in line and, and, and you had a great time in that parade. And that's that's how you do it. And a couple today, a couple people talked about Rachel and how she said, you know, um, or Bill Kunstler, he's just a lawyer, he says to Gayla. She said to Gayla, he's just another human being, that's all. He's another human being, he's just like you and me. And Ken was like that too. 
and we said, well, you know, don't worry about that. You know, think about what you want and how you can get it. And you know what? You can get what you want and someone else can have what they want as well. You can get both things in, in an argument. It's, you don't have to, like, stand the line. And, 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 and it's through conversation. And he used to say, our friends, our friends on the other side, mm -hmm. you know, our friends who, who are the opposition or who think differently than us, our friends who oppose us. He'd always use that terminology and he'd smile when he said it. And that smile loosens everything up. And uh, so I'll always remember that about Ken is, is how much he smiled and he laughed and he had jokes and, and he also was so passionate and the, the, the broadness of his personality and, and then how I see that distributed <laughs> in the family and, and the, the family is like not just like the family of Tilson's, it's the family of Ken and Rachel's relationships in the world. It's huge and I'll forever be grateful for this opportunity to have had, you know, 30 some years of, uh, of being close enough to Ken to ask him important questions. And, and he always told me, my father passed away about 20, 25, 22 years ago now, I think. But Ken always told me when my dad died, I was kind of lost. And he said, he said, uh, it's really hard losing your dad. He said, it's really hard losing your dad. And, <laughs> and I says, yeah, it is. And he says, and you won't really know what that means for a while. Yeah, just hang in there. He gave me the old, you know, shot in the arm. But anyway, yeah, so I, I've missed him since he's been gone, and to celebrate him today was a real gift. It's not a very popular narrative to talk about how an activist Jew lawyer got rich. It's not a very popular, safe-feeling yeah. narrative to be part of. And he did make a lot of money on a handful of cases, and it was one of the great mysteries of his life that he... Um, he was able to do so much and manage to be a very good capitalist at the same time. Yeah. And it's a weird version of success is being incredibly activist, incredibly in the struggle, and financially secure at the same time. And because of the decisions he's made in his life, our family is safer and better off from it. And he was able to support a lot of different people and a lot of different movements because of it. Um, I miss my grandpa. And it's sad that he's gone. And it's also the least tragic death I've ever been a part of. Um, I don't think he left anything unsaid. And his work that was left undone was given over to another generation. And. He died well. He lived well and he fought as hard as he could for as long as he could. And I'm not sure you can ask much more of that from somebody. Ken threw um, his sons David and Mark. I worked for David and Mark at Direct Expressions for five years. Yeah, and that's, so that's how I got to know oh, okay. Ken and Rachel. The Kilson family. Any favorite memory or special memory you have of Ken? Wait, no, turn that off. <laughs> sure, I'll, t I'll stop it. I'm just trying to... <laughs> That's all right, you have to think. What do you mean? I, didn't, I never really worked right directly with him or yeah. anything. Um, I just knew that he, uh, he was a hard worker and raised some wonderful children. Wonderful yeah. Children. Yeah. Well, I've known, Dan, I've known Kimberly since 2007. Yeah. I don't think I've met Dan for a while. Um, but in 2008, the Republican National Convention came to St. Paul, and a bunch of young activists were arrested. Um, they became known as the RNC-8, and Ken was one of the advisors on their sort of combined legal defense team, which was populated with lawyers from the National Lawyers Guild, um, that kind of activist lawyers. And so that's, I, I, it took me a while to realize that um, Ken was uh, was was related to Kimberly and, and Dan, so but he was a he was definitely a hero because when you're an activist you need activist lawyers 
and those guys just meeting all those people around the time of the, the sort of RNC aftermath. It was just amazing to see lawyers that cared about things that really mattered to me, you know. Um, you kind of lawyers get a bad rap, they're like ambulance chasers and costing a lot of money and that kind of thing. Um, but these were kind of like lawyers who were superheroes in a way. And hearing the way that all the lawyers, like Bruce Nastor and, and uh, Jordan and, and Bill Tilton and all those guys, hearing how they talk about uh, Ken is, is really instructive as well because he's like their hero, you know. Um, if there are heroes, he's like their hero. Um, and I, spent, I got to spend Passover with them this year, which was amazing. Um, hadn't done a Passover before. I don't think I'll probably ever have done a Passover quite like that one again. <laughs> Heavy political content and uh, a lot of good challenging stuff. But anyway, um, just to conclude, Ken, it's one thing that's absolutely obvious about Ken is he, he's, he lives on in the community that he left behind him and he inspired and, and helped a lot of people and he's in that case, in that sort of, uh, on that level he will never die, you know, he's got so many um, grateful people out there and even people who weren't directly connected with his life like myself, just knowing that he lived was, was really important. Well, I am here. Rebecca Tilson. Oh. Uh, I talked to him. Tilson's what do you say? granddaughter. Did you do it? And one time I interviewed Grandpa for on the on a video. I think I was just wanting say? to do some uh, well, one thing some I documentation of family uh, history, and I just got excited about it. And I borrowed a video camera from Uncle Mark. And I went to Grandpa's house and I set up a video camera and I interviewed him and I just remember the first thing that he said was he introduced himself and he said, um, you know, I'm Ken Tilson and he and then he said, maybe he said the date and he said his age and then he said, but most importantly, I'm Rebecca Tilson's granddaughter. And it just made me so tickled when he said that and it felt like really playful and really sweet. And I actually couldn't tell that he really wanted to be interviewed by me. So the fact that he said that uh, was just made like really pulled me into um, the moment when they exchanged. And um, well, it made me really like giggle and laugh. And laugh. It was so sweet. Um, so that's one memory. And then he told wonderful stories. And he's always. You know, you ask him a question and he never really answers, he never really tells you the thing that you want to hear. And he sometimes doesn't even answer the question that you think you asked. He answers a question underneath it or um, something that he finds more relevant and more interesting. Or he'll kind of answer your question in this roundabout way, in the way that he doesn't answer it. So. I remember that, and I remember that he has just like such a, um, such a amazing laugh that, you know, he, for all of the hard things that he saw and the places that he put himself and the sorrow and the struggle, he had this um, really like joy, like he just enjoyed uh, life and like he found things to laugh at. And that's one of the things that I will remember is the way that he was able to find joy in all places. I feel really wonderful about how it went today. We just had such a moving collection of people talking and remembering and sharing insights about him. No, I always think in these times when we have a memorial, you know, or sitting Shiva, or having these, you know, times coming together when someone has died, it's, you, you get these people who put all these different facets of a person's life together at one, in one time in one place. And so you just get the, these dimensions of who he was and how he touched people and what kind of 
what kind of life you lived? I mean, what, what? Impact. You know, on people from here on out. Uh, I'm one of Ken's daughter in laws. I'm married to his oldest son, David. And, um, I first, my, my earliest memory of Ken was uh, at a Minnesota 8 uh, rally, I think, a gathering of some kind. Um, but I, David and I have been together since 1972, so we have three children. And, grandchildren and, um, you know, Ken has been really important. I'm going to cry if I really don't <laughs> No, but he's, he has just been one of the main supportive, main, you know, constant, steady presence in my life. I love him deeply. And always so supportive of me and my music and my songwriting. He always said I made him cry whenever I, whenever I sang, he would be crying. <laughs> Whether it was at a family gathering or, you know, in some kind of big public event or concert or whatever. So I just feel... I think what people express today about how... Knowing him, he always touched on and bolstered the best of him, you know, brought out. I mean, just respected and, and was so open and giving, you know, on a personal level to, to people. I felt that so much for him as a father and as a friend and as a family member as a person living a life of great integrity and um, just amazing, amazing person.